All right, Carrie, thank you so much for joining us once again. This topic is pretty interesting. What exactly is a love letter? Well, a little different from when we were in grammar school, <laughs> not quite the same love letter, but love letters or cover letters, buyer letters, it was an inside trick for submitting offers for buyers that became pretty common, very popular. A love letter is really an about me or about us type letter that explains who the buyer is, what they love about the home, and often most impactful, accompanied by a photo. Wow. Okay, so this is really trying to sell yourself to the buyers. It sounds, in theory, Carrie, pretty thoughtful. Why are yeah. having love letters, how has it become this popular thing to try to get ahead of the line, really? That's a good question. Well, they became popular because they shed some light and personality on who the buyer is versus receiving this long, arduous black and white document, which is the purchase offer, which just states names, numbers, dates. There's no life to it. Sellers like, who is buying my house? So the buyer love letter is a tactic used by buyers in an attempt to stand out to the seller, especially in hot markets with low inventory and bidding wars. So this letter started to become the reason buyers were winning over other offers. The love letter fused that emotion into a very cold or indifferent offer presentation, really. Okay, so so that, that seemingly makes sense, but in a world where things can go wrong, they, they often do. What At what point when sending a love letter can that kind of veer to, to the wrong side of, th of things? Yeah, that was a, a wild turn we went through. So what happened was sellers were actually getting turned off by this buyer letter, or they were forming biases based on mm. something that they wouldn't normally if they didn't see that letter or the photo. So seemingly harmless, these love letters actually raised their housing concerns. And they could actually open up problems for real estate professionals and their clients for fair housing violations because of all this personal information that reveal characteristics of the buyer, such as race, religion, familial status, which could then be used knowingly or through an uh. unconscious bias as an unlawful basis for sellers to accept or reject an offer. And it was being reported that sellers were starting to not take offers based on who these buyers were from the love letter. Sad. Yeah. Yikes on that. So if you are considering a writing a love letter, what should you consider maybe doing instead? Well, yes. Are you going to be writing love letters in the future? First, get educated on what is happening with the Fair Housing Act. So first, check with the listing agent or the MLS, which is the multiple listing service where properties are listed, and see are buyer letters being presented? And if so, do so only objectively. Talk about what you love about the home, and not as far as what you would love to do in the home, but what you love about their home, why your offer is strong, and how you are committed to closing. Keep it clean. All right. Los Angeles real estate agent, Carrie White, thanks as always for joining us today. Good. <laughs> and thank you for your, your insight and tips. Obviously, this is a crazy market. You can follow her on Instagram. That's at Carrie White. I'm sorry, at Carrie Ann, Carrie Ann, as well as on YouTube at Carrie White Real Estate.